Hello, everyone. We're going to talk about, as the title said, Django, Django REST framework, and something else that is more Java or Java-esque. Uh, there's a catch because the title you have on the, uh, on, the, on the plan is not exactly the one that we'll be following because we'll fi you'll find out. I don't want to spoil everything. There's enough of that about Game of Thrones already. So let's start with a fast, who am I? Uh, I'm a software developer. I'm a Python uh, developer. Um, I love Tastypy. I love Django REST framework. Uh, I'm more a, a GIS developer. And I work with a team in, uh, in Bologna with, uh, who does basically full stack in many different stacks, even the ones with the wrong P. I think this is very important because it's one of the, of the elements that uh, brings me here today. And uh, it's the interaction with uh, the customer and the designers and the end product that we uh, are required to develop. In fact, being four, uh, four, uh, four developers and one designer means that the designer is the one that interacts with the customer usually and interacts with the client that uh, wants that specific uh, shade of red or that specific form for that specific element on uh, the platform, on the front end, on the front page, on the uh, mobile application. And uh, it's important because as coders, we want to write new stuff, we hate the routine. And as coders, we would love to have uh, the designers changing their graphical stuff and be happy with that and have the clients and the customers be happy with that without us being bothered to change the CSS because that's not our work, honestly. And uh, it's, it's not being so chauvinistic. It's, we, we hate that, honestly. And the, usually what we find ourselves doing is this. And it's good because... Um, we usually find ourselves writing a Django application and we can put the templates into the Django application and we're kind of happy with that and it's good. But the real issue with that is that we are unable to uh, really uh, use this flexibility that Django offers us. So with the issue we had as uh, a Spanish poet says, a wise man's question contains half the answer. What does the issue we want to say, uh, we, we've seen before, we don't want to repeat ourselves, we don't want to uh, do the same work all over again every time. How does that impact the, the, the world we want to define and we want to express? Well, we don't want to exp uh, explain the APIs we write. We, I mean, the customer already has uh, exactly uh, uh, understood what we are going to describe of this world. Uh, we know, mm, we, we would love these uh, uh, APIs to be self-documenting. And what is more self-documenting than a beautiful piece of code? Except it is not, and we know that very well, but it's, difficult to make that understand uh, and it's difficult to um, really have it uh, uh, explained to, um, to a designer and to uh, a software uh, and to the, 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 the end customer of the application. So what we found out as a team is that we need simple standard rules. That standard rules means standard APIs. That's the basis of restfulness. Uh, and that's good because standard APIs mean standard li libraries, and standard libraries mean more time and more possibilities to create the famous tool for the, our designer to uh, basically design and draw his own interfaces without our, need, uh, without our help. And that is an enormous win because that creates a lot of time to be used for this. And it's all a matter of how we want to describe the world. In a talk in the previous uh, session uh, about the status of REST frameworks, um, I think one of the aspects that was not 
really uh, 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 dealt with what is the meta level description that these um, tools that these libraries that uh, Python uh, has can uh, can offer in fact with uh, considering that we're using Django we could use many different ways to design our API or describe the world we want to um, define as APIs. In fact, there are endless ways. We could use Django class-based views and uh, personalize them to do the, the, the hard work of responding to our uh, options call, to our gets, posts, um, and all the interactions that we consider useful. We could describe a Swagger file, and sadly it's not that easy to do that in, uh, in an automated manner uh, with uh, Django and with, um, for example, REST, Django REST framework. So what could we, so, so we would need to describe our API in a completely different J uh, JSON file, and then expose that JSON file through some, uh, uh, way that has to be kept uh, aligned with the real code of our application. We could use Wizzle2. Uh, uh, Good, we could use the RAML. You could, we could use any kind of standard and we could, any kind of standard based on a markup language, any kind of standard based on a uh, JSON uh, variant. We could use UML with our uh, with uh, graphs and designs and uh, um, any kind of descriptive uh, element, or we could use any kind of transformation. And as always, this is the rule. Once we have 15 standards and somebody thinks up uh, a way to standardize them all in a universal standard, we, ha we end up with one more standard to mess with. Do we really want that, honestly? No, because it's already a mess and we don't want entropy to uh, kill us all sooner than needed. There's Donald Trump for that. So considering that we're starting with the Django framework as the basis for our, um, for our platform, this, the, the, the options that uh, remain are basically two. And it's Django class-based views or Django REST framework. Let's go back to the basics. So what are the two ways that we could use to, um, to work with? We could use, again, class-based views are very loose. We can really define many kinds of interactions with them. And they're cool, but it means defining an adapter for, uh, from Django to the outside world that shows us the meta information that our, um, our model represents. On the other hand, we have Django REST framework, which is quite strict because it implements a real, uh, a very uh, precise RESTful model. And it is very descriptive on what kind of uh, action um, we can do with the elements but it, has a, uh, uh, it lacks on, this, on the description of data structures, at least based on Python 2. The code hinting uh, features of Python 3 have not been yet very explored by the framework, and we're trying to um, work on that on the, um, through the description of the metadata. One more thing that Django, requests the Django REST framework offers is the options method. It's an amazing tool. Uh, how many of you use it to work on a, a Django REST framework? How many of you use Django REST framework? That's, oh, okay. The, okay, I'm not in the wrong room. <laughs> it's not obvious. Uh, how many of you use the options, uh, the, the, the metadata element of, of Django REST framework? It's a, possibly the most amazing uh, element that, that, that can be used because it really describes you. Uh, I, I happen to, to, been, uh, to, to, um, to have been working on, on a form uh, generator based on just that, and it's amazing how much we can achieve with that. And maybe sometimes it's a little bit under descriptive, but 
with just a few adjustments, it becomes an incredible, uh, 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 it tells you really the story of the backend and how it works, how it interacts with stuff and how it represents things. Whoa, what happened? Uh, thingy, where have you gone? Okay. Okay. Um, as said, it's an amazing tool. So what we have now, we have chosen Django REST framework. So we suddenly have a backend based on Django and Django REST framework that keeps us on the database. We have all the features of Django, all the exp uh, uh, the express. Uh, the expressions of the RESTful uh, mm, framework, the REST framework given by Django REST framework. We have the API exposed through Django REST framework and we have the metadata exposed to the options element. So, cool, but we have added two layers on our app and that's not cool, it's not maintainable, it's, it's a mess because we have the model, we have the serializer, we have the view, the, the view sets and uh, Sometimes we don't have just one serializer for one model, that would be a perfect world, and sometimes we have two, three, four serializer for one specific model because we have one for creation, one for details, one for uh, uh, listings, one for um, other specific views or nested views or whatever. So it becomes, it, it risks, uh, uh, the risk is making it becoming really messy. Unless we have, we get something cool from that. Unless we can find a nice tool or library that helps us doing cool things on the front end. And here comes the famous catch. Because Angular 2 could be a nice tool, and Angular 4, uh, uh, considering it changes number every six months. Uh, Angular, whatever the number, the, the highest bidder wins, <coughs> could be a nice tool but it has a, a, an amazing side effect. It's an, a really cool element and has a really amazing um, ability to describe and to uh, uh, enable, really, the structuring of meta-level uh, descriptions of the world. It does not work well with automated designers, drag and drop designers. We have a library where we have developed a library to uh, enable us to really ease the work with Angular. And uh, it's a nice library, it helps a lot, it um, shortens uh, uh, development time a lot, but it doesn't help us help our designer. So, what's the alternative? The alternative is to go for something pure JavaScript driven. How many of you have happened to know Grapes.js? Good. Grapes.js is an amazing tool. It's extensible, flexible, and really a beautiful uh, drag and drop web page designer. It's, it was built for um, uh, n newsletter g d designing in a very WordPress-y fashion uh, in order to help uh, 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 designers recreate their newsletter in a fashion, in a, in a simple way to keep all the elements under control. But it's a really amazing tool as a platform because it's um, easy to use for the designer, fun, fun to work with uh, for the developers. The only side effect is that it's pure JavaScript. And there is no way to integrate JavaScript into the Grapes.js uh, element. So um, that means that we have to create something magic-ish to uh, connect the worlds. What if we could take the DRF metadata and generate Grapes.js components from the standardized metadata? What do we mean by that? Suppose you have the um, elements, 
Suppose we have the elements we can work with described as, uh, as exactly as the Django REST framework does. We have the, all the methods we, we know of. We know that we can have uh, the get on the list. We know that we can uh, have the get on the detail, the post, the put, and the options, and the delete. And as such, we can easily define how these elements have to be connected to, to each other. And from that, we can easily generate new components for the Grapes.js platform. As such, it becomes quite easy to define a, a simple way for the designer to take our metadata describing the API we have transporting into the, that everything into Grapes.js, looking at the sidebar where the components live, dropping them into the, the, um, into the interface, and saving the resulting elements as pure um, JavaScript and um, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, basically a zip file can be generated directly from Grapes.js. It's not easily versionable, I know, I, and I totally agree, but it requires just to learn a bit of Git, and the designer can do that. And uh, his code is perfectly versioned, and it, it, it can be tracked. And the, the result in this is that the developers can live in their own space, defining their own data structures and their own uh, data models. These data models are then made visible through the metadata to the designer, who doesn't need to read documents or analyze uh, papers and, and results of discussions. He just looks at the code and starts designing their interface. Just looks at the components and starts designing their, their, their details and starts defining what color the, the a specific element has, what um, uh, pattern it has to take from uh, whatever other source. And from whatever decision the customer, the, 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 the customer makes on what kind of elements he wants to see. It's not a pure Angular way, but it's, it goes away, it goes very far as, um, as a data structure. So what are the contributions? What are the elements we, are, we, we have published and we will publish in the, next, uh, in the next few days? Because these are the elements that really, um, uh, that we're really trying to publish and transform into, uh, let's say, betterments for the community. The Jan Django REST Framework Metadata Transformer, a tool that enables us to transform the, the, the Django REST Framework metadata into a JavaScript that can be used on Grapes.js. In fact, on different situations, one of them is Grapes.js. On the other hand, we have the Grapes.js data attribute animator, which is not strictly bound to Grapes.js, but it basically helps us um, to transform the data from, uh, uh, the, the data attributes in Grapes.js from uh, vague concepts saying that this data set should go and take data from that specific backend and uh, use this or that uh, login data, login information to uh, um, get the information from the backend and should expose that through this or that template. And should wrap all these informations into one uh, simple action that goes directly to the backend, pulls the data, shows them on the front end, and uh, solves everything with a simple, uh, as a simple task, as a simple repetitive task. On the other hand, as said, um, 
we're trying to standardize the work on Angular 2 as well, Angular whatever as well. Um, we didn't discuss this, but it's, uh, the, it was the main reason for this talk, in fact, um, because we were hoping a certain amount of, of changes in the, in, uh, in the Angular 2 infrastructure uh, would happen by now. It didn't happen. <clears throat> but it's, it's an amazing framework anyway, and all the, the work we have done is uh, right now uh, will be published in the next few days as uh, Model Nodes Backend Management Service, uh, which is a generic uh, backend management uh, uh, platform for um, Angular 2 services, enabling interaction with any kind of um, flavored uh, backends or specific backends if you write your own. Uh, your own flavor. Um, all in all, this is the result. Finally, we can stay in our corner and hide behind our screens and be happy that we don't have to interact with customers, except for the beginning where we have to easily discuss this, but we are discussing the possibility to have the designer doing also the data modeling. Well, if possible. And uh, the designer talks to the customer and is happy and Rich, uh, Ricardo, keeps interacting with uh, his friends, the customers, and we are all, and everybody is happy, basically. That was our main goal and we think that with this structure we're able to go for that. Um, I think we don't have the time for a full demo, so I'll say with the, the next, uh, ah, okay, well, anyway, the, 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 I would say it's better to maybe ask, uh, get some questions and uh, have some answers, give you some answers. Anyway, these are the mediums, Twitter, GitHub, for me and the team. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Mark, for the great talk. So, questions? Thank you for your talk. So, uh, what happens when the thing you're doing on the back end uh, goes away from the standard model view sets and the standard generic APIs? Because this is, uh, for me, this is for uh, getting people hyped about the REST framework. Model view sets are great, but not really useful in real projects because there are requirements that uh, move you away from there. So, what happens then? You have just an API view. Mm -hmm. um, there are two aspects on that answer. The first one is that um, if there is an aspect that, go, that moves away from, gen, from, from the classic model view set, then uh, we try to understand why it moves uh, away from the model view set. And uh, at least in the last two, three projects that we worked on, it was just a matter of uh, describing the world that, for example, uh, if you put a like on, if you like uh, uh, something, then it's, I like this post, and it's put as a verb. Uh, on the other hand, if you think if, of it as a physical action, you want to have an interaction with your database, and you want to put a something on the database, we, we, you need to track something, then you need to physically uh, uh, represent it uh, as something different. Then it's a more a matter of, uh, defining the interactions, the actions on the, the data as real physical things that, that become at, at a certain point models. There are, I agree, some aspects that cannot be uh, uh, redirected to this. For example, uh, if you suppose you have uh, different kinds of visualizations of the same element where we, have, where we might have different detail uh, representation of the same uh, model. Uh, in that case, um, it's part of the extended metadata that we've been working on extending the metadata generator to expose these kinds of information as well, because it's the only way to 
go into that direction. Uh, again, personally, I think, I, I feel more comfortable keeping the REST structure rigid and strict because it keeps the, I mean, standardizing helps uh, not getting the call from the designer. <laughs> let's, let's speak cynically. We don't want to be called by the designer. How do I get to that information? Uh, we would love the designer to be able to do that by himself and saying, okay, this is a data structure that I need. Where do I, do I get that? Let's see the, 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 the metadata. Or maybe let's see from the components if there is a component that, keeps, that gives me that information. If that's missing, then that's a good thing. That's the kind of, inf the kind of work we love because that's me, that means that we need to explore a new way to expose the information. But So, uh, hi, and thanks for that great talk. I've been uh, working with Vue.js, which is basically mm -hmm. the best bits from Angular and React. Uh, if I understood correctly, um, the Grape.js looks pretty nice. Um, how, how far is it the, the bridge thing, or is, it, um, is there a way, or is it like something uh, like a, if you will, ORM for JavaScript, for example, for Django uh, to get a JavaScript end kind of a thing, just um, like a library thingy for JavaScript and that would work like a ORM uh, in the back end. Are we like, is this moving forwards it or is this implementing the, this kind of a thing? Um. Your question is if there is something like a, uh, an ORM for the JavaScript yeah, part. Like, like um, um, the grape.js is obviously one step higher, but yeah. if, if um, is, the, is the medium bit you talked about, is it, is it something like a ORM for the JavaScript, or um, is there a project like that? Grape.js is just a front-end designer. And that's exactly the limit of the project. Um, we've been experimenting with, uh, um, with Realm for both, uh, for basically any platform right now uh, because they enabled Realm on uh, uh, web development, on web pages as well. So there is this uh, possibility and it's quite interesting because it's a, a very, uh, uh, interesting world to, to explore. Um, right now, it's quite difficult to integrate the various parts because it's JavaScript and it's, as the people from TypeScript said, hey, stable is the new alpha. And so you don't get really to a standpoint where you say, okay, this is stable stuff, let's put that together and see what happens. There is this beautiful lake where every ship is slightly moving and you don't exactly know in which direction. And uh, we're working on, on trying to, to, to have these elements interacting. As I said, the, the most interesting project in that direction at the moment is possibly Realm to work with an ORM. But there are also smaller projects that try to just rely on uh, um, SQLite on the browser side to have uh, almost a, a deep connection with the, the database. Any way can be interesting, any way can be explored. Again, the most advanced project on that is real. So. Thank you once again for the great talk and remember to rate the talks on the app. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. Thank you.